morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning, kids and cubs. <laughs> Hello, kids. Ah, welcome to season four and episode number 372 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryon Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Wednesday, May 1st, 2024 beginning of dental care coverage day in Canada. One million uh, Canadians 70 and over are now eligible uh, for coverage. So uh, please remember, however, that this is not free dental care, right? Your dentist can still charge whatever this goes towards it. Uh, But, uh, um, and you know, there's a lot of dentists that are still kind of waiting to see how this plays out before they register for the program. The government's trying to make it even more simpler for them to register. So, you know, there'll be a couple of speed bumps at the, at the beginning, as there always is when there's a new national program. So let's not panic when the conservatives seize upon that, because right now the conservatives line was always, well, there's no program in existence. So, well, now there is. Yeah. So they'll, so, they'll pick it apart yeah. tomorrow or right. maybe today. Who knows? Yeah. But, and I believe May 1st is International Workers' Day. Mm, is it May Day? Yeah, May Day. So, there you go. If you happen to, to, if, you happen to, be, to if you happen to be doing a good job, good job. <laughs> All right. I'm your host, the Eager Beaver, pronounce he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, a, and with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes, and of course, Miss Lola. Ah, oh, hello, dear. Ah, a big shout out goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today? Mental health is good. Physical health is uh, suffering. Uh, I, I don't know if I, if I pulled a tendon or, or mm. a, a ligament or something in my left uh, arm, elbow, mostly elbow, but it extends up to my elbow and down to my wrist. So there's some damage in there. I'm trying to, uh, trying to pick up Miss Lola. Uh, and I was just, I had her on the front and I went to grab her at the back and my arm slipped a bit and it popped and I'm like, Oh, that, that, that hurt, that hurt. So I've been in excruciating pain since about 6 PM last night. <sighs> um, along with, there was an, a soup incident. <laughs> What is it with you and soup? Seriously. Ask my wife. <laughs> okay. Um, the great soup <laughs> incident of 2024. Sitting on the couch and she went to, she had a big mug of soup and, and went to grab it and the lid wasn't attached. It was like a, a sipping mug. Uh-huh. And uh, I wore it over both my feet. <laughs> And it was excruciatingly hot. Now, luckily, we had a friend with us sitting beside me on the couch, and he immediately reached down and ripped both my socks off. Thank God, because it was like boiling hot. 
So no serious damage. It just hurt for a little bit. I'm fine. No, 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 not, not even first degree burns. He was able, like literally he, he well, he's, a, he had his daughter with him. Right. So he flew into action, ripped my socks off immediately. Like I would just lift my feet up and God, geez, he pulled them off right away. So. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Soup. Now you understand no more soup in my house. Thank you. Jeez. No soup for me. If there's soup in my house, I'm making it and it's going to be tomato. That's it. <laughs> Oh no! Soup incident oh, of twenty twenty four. Oh, oh. Um, speaking of your lovely wife. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, you have your beaver mug. Mm -hmm. And I have my grizzly Ed, mug. As you can tell by the way it appears, the plaid is green. Yes, 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 yes. The green screen, which happens to be my favorite color. So this is definitely, most definitely, not only just a beaver mug, but a Mister Beaver mug. Hmm. Is this the Parks Canada logo, by the way? I'm I, wondering. It, it, may, it looks like it, right? It looks or, like it. Yeah, I, I remember, remember when I got the pass. Yeah. Beavers. I, it might be. I, I, don't know. I don't know. When I got the pass for Canada 150, because mm -hmm. uh, the parks were free that summer. Yes. That's because we went to um, uh, Bay of Fundy National Park when we, went to, when we did our tour of Atlanta, Canada that year. And yeah, it was like, I seemed to, I don't know, kind of. Anyway. It's my beaver mug. So thank you very much, Mumsel Fox. All right, uh, kids and cubs, uh, I know you know what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, it's unavoidable. Unavoidable. Uh, all right. So let's. Someone made an ass of himself again uh, on purpose, of course. Yeah. This is, again, do this, get ejected one hour later, not even. There was a fundraising appeal. Yeah, within an hour. Yeah. Claiming he's the victim. One hour later, claiming he's the victim, not for the reason he actually would be a victim if he actually were a victim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the thing he said he was ejected out of the House of Commons for is not the thing for which he was ejected out of the no. Commons for. The man is incapable um, of telling the truth. So um, this is all a stunt. And of course, we had a mini parade because yes. uh, lesser reported, but he was not the first one ejected on that day. No. Somebody was ejected first, then him, then everybody else decided to leave, which for me, I said, hey, House of Commons without conservatives, can we do something to make this permanent? Because, hey, and not without people, Canadians, who are conservative or actual conservatives, without conservatives, capital C, the people from this party. Because they really had nothing. Oh, there's, we're not getting any value for money for them. But then they all walked out. Yeah. None was happier than the leader of the Black Quebecois because suddenly he gets more questions. Yes, <laughs> and, and and his first question was was a beauty. <laughs> no, it was a beauty. It was great. Uh, so we'll get uh, to all that in just a second. Yes. So basically, the for about the first twenty three minutes of question period yesterday uh, were something, uh, but there there were things. Um, the big headline is that he got ejected, but there are things that were said and there are things that happened. Yes. In the process of that, so we're going to look at this as entertaining. Woo, he got to like this. But there are things, as I'm watching it unfold, there are parts of me that are going like, what the f? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So enjoy the entertainment value of him getting booted. Like this, but this is what he wanted. He engineered this. Of course he did. So him getting booted is not the win that a lot of people who'd like to see him get what's coming think it is. No, no, no. And along the way, uh, he pulled some stuff that's not uh, cool. Look, and it's let's about also, damn time he's been ejected. It's yes, about damn time. Yes. That's, it's long overdue, right? Yes. But this was, yes. this was plotted. And I mean, and so long as he continues, he, and he should have been elected. It, that The reason for which he was ejected was an actual reason for which he should have been ejected anyway, according to parliamentary rules. But yes. He should be ejected for abusing the parliament. Yes. This, until you are going to stop behaving in parliament in such ways that it's a clip generating machine, you cannot come back, is really what it should be here. And let's also not forget that the overall context of all of this, yesterday's announcement that he's just well, the charter. That's that's just going to be optional when I'm prime yeah. minister. Yeah. Okay. And this are two things 
back to back. And the only reason these two things are out there back to back is because of what happened when he made that little pit stop on the border. Mm-hmm. That wasn't just a 24 hour story that died. No. It lasted all week and it's still lasting. So somebody needs to change the channel. So first, hey, I might suspend constitutional rights, wink, wink, if you know what I mean. I'm not actually saying the words, but wink, wink, if you know what I mean, to a room full of policemen. Yes. Police officers, sorry. Yes. Um, one, and then the very next day, acting the fool and getting himself ejected. So these two stories now dominate the news. Yes. And... Think about this. If he would rather have the conversation be about him going in to suspend charter rights and getting him himself ejected from the House of Commons mm-hmm. rather than the story that was dominating, what does that tell you about how hard and how deep is penetrating that story he wants to change the channel from? Because these two things are not great looks either. No, they're not. But if he can change the channel, he will, which is what he did. But we're so going to remind everybody on. of all of the stuff. So, so changing the channel somewhat successfully, but they're still talking about, there's still news, news articles and opinion pieces about that, that border meeting today. Um, so they didn't all go away. This will last a couple, this stunt will last a day or two and whatnot, but oh, yeah. unless they keep on doing it. Unless he comes back to the house today and does it again. Well, we right. shall see, shan't we? All right. So that's the context. All Let's right. Watch. And compassionate manner. That is what Canadians expect. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Minister is not work worth the drugs and death. His extreme and radical drug policy has increased overdose deaths in British Columbia by 380%. In the year following his decriminalization of crack, heroin, and other hard drugs in hospitals, transit buses, coffee shops, and parks where children play, there has been a record-smashing 2,500 deaths. Will the Prime Minister accept the BC NDP's demand to recriminalize those drugs? The right ar- okay, we're just, I just want to point out some stuff here. Number one, this was not the Prime Minister's policy. No. It was the government of British Columbia's policy. Correct. They came to Canada, the government of Canada. They asked Health Canada, the Controlled Substances Unit, to do a special exemption. The Prime Minister, well, Health Canada agreed, and the Prime Minister did not object. Right. And cabinets did not object. So the yes. whole thing is based on a lie. Pro- a province came with a request. The prime minister granted it. It mm-hmm. was a pilot project. They wanted to see if it could work. Unfortunately, there were unintended consequences in terms of, uh, I don't know if the word social blight is the proper term for it, but mm-hmm. more open drug use on the street and that type of stuff. And there's, you know, Yes, okay, so people come to the hospital who need help, who happen to have on them. Well, whose job is it to make sure that the hospital stays safe? Is it the nurses? Is it the, These are all things that need to get figured out, right? The thing goes, it's like, oh, here's a situation we didn't think would happen. Gee, how do we handle that? This makes the news. There's an election coming in British Columbia. The NDP is leading. They start yeah. to see the polls dipping a little bit as this news becomes bigger and bigger. Whoops, they pull it all of a sudden. Something that was supposed to be a three-year pilot project and it was supposed to be a three-year pilot project for a reason now becomes a one-year and whoops. Mm-hmm. Not giving it a chance. Um, but this is the federal government listening to the provinces Provinces said, we want to try this. The federal government says, we will not stand in your way and allowed it to happen. It's not a federal government policy. No. No, it's a provincial policy and they had to consult with Health Canada and get signed off on the federal government for it to be granted. 
there it needed to be a special exception to the law because everywhere else in the country possession right. of 2.5 or that doesn't have that's not under this has a two point that there's no 2.5 personal possession exemption it was there and they also when the numbers that he cites when he goes up 380 percent remember we just talked about this the other day on the show when we we're talking about the numbers like guy philly mm-hmm. mm-hmm. mr poliev stopped at 2000 stopped at the year before yes the final year data of course that showed numbers going down He's cherry picking. Because we said it on the show, ooh, that looks about triple yeah. during the three years of COVID. But the latest numbers are down 20%. Yeah, it doesn't the Latest numbers are down 20%. He didn't include those numbers. Of course not, because it doesn't support comment. his false narrative. He did not. Remember, when I when, we, when people say that statistics, you could make people say it, to say them everything, anything you want. You can't make the numbers say anything you want. But when you start and stop time matters. Yes. You have to have a representative sample. And if you are editing the sample in such a way as to make the number most or un, most or least favorable, mm-hmm. that's the same as lying. Right. Honorable Prime Minister. Speaker, I just answered that question. What hasn't been answered by the Leader of the Opposition is why he chooses to continue to court extreme right nationalist groups like Diagonal. He refuses to denounce these extremists who don't believe Canadians should coexist with each other. Instead, they call for war and tell people to follow uh, their instincts accordingly. The leader of the Conservative Party is actively courting the support of groups with white nationalist views. It is disturbing, and he needs to stand up and apologize now. So soon in question period, it is important that we try to control ourselves. I'll ask the honourable member from St. Albert, uh, Edmonton, please, to allow members to ask uh, the questions and members to respond. The honourable leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, I always condemn extremism and racism, including from the guy who spent the first half of his adult life as a practicing racist, dressing up in hideous racist costumes so many times. Okay. Now, we all know that that's a load of bullshit that he's always fought racism. He of the tar baby, he of on the day of the first apology to indigenous people uh, going to CFRA and saying, oh, they just need a stronger work ethic. We're not getting value for money yeah. for legal tort settlements. Right. He of the guy who ran, again, I keep, I'm going to keep on saying it, ran to the Jewish community for cover on the first day of Hanukkah mm-hmm. as he voted against mm-hmm. funding for a Holocaust Museum in a Jewish community center. He of, hey, WEF, globalists and George Soros, they're coming to get you. Yeah, that's an anti-Semitic dog whistle. Come on. Come on. Always felt, jeez, please, number one. And uh, that uh, member from St. Albert Edmonton, Mm -hmm. by the way, trying to prevent people from speaking, his tenant, sorry, Mm -hmm. his wife's tenant. His wife's tenant, yes. Michael Cooper. Howdy doody, howdy doody on speed, Cooper. (laughs) Why why does Alberta Uh, keep electing these... uh, MGTOW incel 23, 24 year old children. I do not. Uh, that is, n- and that is not, not a knock against 23 and 24 year old uh, adults. These guys are children. Vreerzen, Vreesen, or whatever his name is, yeah. and, and Sam Cooper, Michael Cooper, yeah. and Michael, and Sam Oosterhoff and Oosterhoff. And these are all, these are all homeschooled carbon copy, carbon copy, religious right wing evangelical <sighs> children. Who, who are too young. I mean, shit, they were elected before they even, the frontal lobes were fully formed, for Christ's sake. Jeez. We should pass a law where you need to be at least 25 to run for a member of parliament. Ooh. Well, you need to have a Did little I? bit of experience in the real world. I mean it. Uh, let's just say, if I was at the National Debating Championships, I could debate the pro and con on that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. No, I understand. Look, hey, look, in the United States of America, you have to be at least 35 to run for president. Yeah. So there should be a minimum age requirement for members of parliament to know that you've actually lived and experienced some of the world in real life. I mean, some of these guys were like a year or two out of university. If, if I don't know. There's some days I think even that we should have some seats specifically for people who are 5 to 13. <laughs> well, All I'm saying is they know how to share. Well, that's an interesting comment from I am a digital soldier and no drama teachers allowed. Well, that's... I don't know if you're doing a play on words there or not, but um, <laughs> the Prime Minister was a I, math teacher who I taught that, a single think, semester of I drama. I think this may be sarcasm. Okay, okay. Mr. Grizzly. I'm just, you know, all right. May not, may, uh, may not be a teaching moment on this one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, just, uh, all right, let's get back to the, uh, the clips, shall we? Okay. the opposition uh, knows that to make an accusation directly at, a, at the character of a single person is not appropriate. And I'm going to ask all members to control themselves. I'll ask the Honourable uh, Leader of the Opposition to rephrase this question and to start uh, for the talk. Mr. Speaker, I will also condemn the extremism of a Prime Minister who gives hundreds of thousands of dollars of anti-racism money to a Jew hater who has proposed shooting Jews in the head. Yeah. I, condemn, I condemn a Prime Minister who allows the IRGC, which murdered 55 Canadians, to remain legal. And I condemn a Prime Minister who allows open use of crack, heroin, meth and weapons in hospital rooms that threaten nurses and on school buses next to children. Will the Prime Minister reverse his extremist policies at the death of Okay, notice the big gulp after he sit on school buses after children. Mm -hmm. On school buses after children, mm -hmm. there's his tell. Um, so he's referencing the Laith Maroof thing, mm -hmm. where they revoked the money and opened an investigation into how that could have happened in the first place, so that doesn't happen again. Um, this... This guy just... Everything yeah. in the kitchen sink here. But what happened here is you will notice that up until now, the loudest they got was when the speaker was trying to restore order. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hyenas and howler monkeys mm -hmm. and seals. Oh my. So, and then the speaker asked him to rephrase. And he did not. So now he's in open defiance. Yes. Okay. Openly defying. Now watch how long he continues to do this. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of Opposite is showing us exactly what shameful, spineless leadership looks like. He shakes hands with white nationalists and then goes to active report the support of those members and has the nerve. Get it together, Greg! Get it the honorable member from Lethbridge if she has problems with the chair that she should challenge the chair in a way but as she knows as the honorable member from Lethbridge knows 
that by challenging the chair is against the rules of this House. I'll ask the honourable member to please to ask her to withdraw her remarks. Acting in a disgraceful manner. I'm going to ask will you. Will you? Okay. Now the speaker just turned off the microphone so that nothing from the house is being broadcast. Uh, we've shown you the clips from beginning to end with no edits out. Right. There's been no evidence of disgraceful behavior. Right? to name you for disregarding the authority of the chair. Pursuant to authority granted to me by Standing Order 11, I order you to withdraw from the House and from any participation by video conference for the remainder of this day's sitting. So that's the first. That's the first. We had a mini, we had a mini parade. Mm -hmm. See all the howler monkeys? Mm -hmm. uh, I know. Mrs. Thomas, my apologies. Oh. I apologize for getting now Miss versus Mrs. Point. Ron. I'm going to ask the Prime Minister to please. Well, did you hear somebody yell at him, get it together, Greg? Get it together, Greg. And do you have any idea what you're doing? And that sounded a little bit like Michael Cooper, that yeah. voice there. Can't yeah. say for sure, but. Hmm. Yep. Uh, as I'd ask the uh, leader of the opposition to with to uh, to start from again and to make sure that he does to start his question and to reframe it in a way that does not call into the character of an individual member of parliament, the honourable prime minister, right honourable prime minister. Mr. Speaker, the leader opposite is showing us once again uh, what he will do to try and earn votes through personal attacks. He shakes the hands of a leader of a white nationalist group, then goes to actively court the support of the group's members and thinks he can get away with it. This is a group that advocates for violence against 2SLGBTQI plus Canadians, against Hindus and Sikhs, uh, against uh, Muslims and Jews. Diagonal stands against everything we stand for as Canadians. Canadians, and yet he will not denounce them or what they stand for. That is shameful, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, that, like everything else he says, is false. He uses fears and fear and falsehood and this latest distraction because he doesn't want to face the fact that he has become so extreme and radical that even the BC NDP is distancing himself, themselves from his decriminalization of crack, heroin, meth, and other hard drugs in hospital rooms, causing nurses to have to stop breastfeeding their babies for fear that their contaminated air might end up in the breast milk of the baby. What? <laughs> Nurse, exactly. Thank you. I'm glad you caught it. What? Nurses are breastfeeding their babies? Yeah, that's... Okay, let's keep going. Why won't he ban these drugs? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. He will still won't condemn these groups. Any leader that needs the support of a far-right white nationalist group to fundraise and get closer to power does not deserve elected office. This is exactly, this is a 19-year career politician who knows exactly what he's doing and thinks he can get away with it. It was a choice to pander to white nationalists, not an accident, and it is a choice to continue to not condemn them and condemn everything they stand for. It is quest for votes. I'm going to ask the honourable member for the second time from St. Albert, Edmonton to please withhold his comments until he has the floor. The honourable leader of the opposition. 
Mr. Speaker, it is a choice for him to implement extremist policies that have taken the lives of 2,500 British Columbians every single year. Since the NDP has asked him to reverse course on his and formerly their radical policy, 22 British Columbians have died of drug overdoses. But he continues to allow those drugs to kill the people in our hospitals and on our public transit. When will we put an end to this wacko policy by this wacko Prime Minister? No. 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 Is not there are a couple of things which are going on here today which is not acceptable. And I ask all members, please, to keep themselves, to control themselves. I'm going to ask two things. One, I'm going to ask the Honourable uh, Leader of the Opposition to withdraw uh, that term, which is not considered parliamentary. Mr. Speaker, I replace Wacko with extremist. He is an extremist. The Honourable Member to please. I'm going to ask the Leader of the Opposition once again to just withdraw that comment, please. And I'll invite the Honourable Member. I'm going to ask the Honourable Leader of the Opposition to please withdraw that comment and simply withdraw that comment. I'll replace it with radical no, I'm not, policy. I am not asking to replace. I'm asking the honourable member to just simply withdraw. Mr. Speaker, I replace the word wacko with extremist. Did you oh. hear that? Was somebody yelled in the background, white supremacist? Well, somebody said they called us white supremacists. Oh, no, is that what he said? said that, yes. He said, okay. no, you're courting the votes of white yes. supremacists, which you are. Which you are. Now, you will notice that uh, PP, when he stood up, one of the first times you mentioned again, went back to the line of the prime minister parading in racist mm -hmm. costumes for half mm -hmm. his life. Yeah. Um, as they're all, all of them disrespecting and defying a black man. That's the, the that's the irony here. Now, right there, right? Calling him a disgrace. I'm gonna ask the honorable leader of the opposition one last time to please withdraw that comment and simply withdraw that comment. I simply withdraw and replace with the aforementioned adjective. Mr. Polyev, I have to name you for disregarding the authority of the chair. Pursuant to the authority granted to me by Standing Order 11, I order you to withdraw from the House and from any participation by video conference for the remainder of this day's sitting. You know, there's a lot going on here that's being not, not talked about. And one of the things I'm going to bring up really quickly here while we have a few seconds is that we have to remember that Greg Fergus is A, obviously a black man, but B, he was a liberal member of parliament. So I think when he chooses to do something like this, he's doing it very strategically so that he's not accused of being a liberal plant by the conservatives. Because here's the thing, the conservatives don't put him there. The House does. Yeah. The liberals don't put him there. The House does. Yeah. So he was he, voted speaker by his peers, his peers, right? Not a party by his peers. So that's both sides of the house uh, and, and including the block and the greens. So he does have to play. He's got a very thin line to march upon here though, because a black male elected in Quebec and, and liberal. So he's got three things sort of marching against him on the conservative side of the house because we all know how much they, 
they love to use black people until mm -hmm. they don't need them anymore. Yep. Indeed. The second matter which I was going to bring up was the fact that I was hearing some cat calling from the far end of the house. I'm gonna, I wasn't able to identify the person, but I'll ask all members to carry themselves, carry themselves in a way that is dignified for this house. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition wants to talk about extremism. Well, a week ago, he visited a Diagalon encampment. Diagalon hates that minorities in this country get the same protections as everyone else, and they are charter-protected rights. Just yesterday, a week after the Conservative leader sat down with... Ask the honourable member from Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes to please, to please withdraw, to please uh, only take the microphone when he is afforded the opportunity to ask a question. I'll ask the honourable, right honourable Prime Minister, to continue. The member from Leeds, Grenville, is Michael Barrett, by the way. I'm going to Thank ask you. the right honourable. Prime Minister, Minister to finish his question. He has 15 seconds left on the clock. Mr. Speaker, the association of the Leader of the Opposition with Diagalon and their disdain for charter protected rights brought them to just yesterday, a week after he sat down with Diagalon members, he gave a speech pledging to overturn the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, the rights of Canadians and our justice system. That's dangerous. The Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. Mr. Speaker, I would like to congratulate you on your common sense today. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Shot across the bow. <laughs> Using their own words against them. That was just a thing of beauty. <sighs> it's wonderful. <laughs> From that point on, uh, things got a little more civil. Yes. Um, but I mean, that was the gist of it, right? That was, that was literally what it was all about. And, and come on, let's be realistic here. That was staged to fundraise. He was trying oh. to get booted. Yes, yes. Um, and the first questions from the block, the, and then the first questions from the NDP were also, you know, we could have gone to, to about like minute 23 and there were things were there still had some tinge of this uh, mm -hmm. going over. Uh, and then we got back into a more normal question period, you know, after the prime minister and the leader of the opposition questions, uh, the, each opposition leader gets their first question. Then we get into everybody else getting asked and it's, mm -hmm. then it becomes a little bit of a normal thing. Uh, but yeah, all the yelling, all the screaming, all the hooting and hollering. And yeah, uh, just want to remind you, kids and cubs, that um, you pay for this. Yes. This is how conservatives believe that your tax dollars should be put to work. Mr. Grizzly? Yeah, within an hour. Breaking news. They kicked Pierre out. Friend, this just happened. The Liberal Speaker just threw, all caps, Pierre Polyev out of the House of Commons for calling Justin Trudeau's drug policy wacko. Yet forgot to mention the part where he also called the Prime Minister wacko. Mm -hmm. Right? Because he did that too. Right? And sins of omission are the same as lying. Right? Was Pierre wrong? Legalizing open use of hard drugs like crack, meth, and illegal fentanyl is wacko. It wasn't. Legalized open use did not happen. Possession of 2.5 grams or less was not going to be criminalized. That's, and it wasn't legalized. It was there's a difference decriminalized yeah. in one specific area of the nation 
upon request of the provincial government because after doing all their work and all their research, the best evidence-based and science-based data showed that this was the way to go. And there are countries in the world where certain things are way more decriminalized than they are here. Uh, Portugal, for example. Yes, that's the go-to example. Well, and and, and the so Netherlands. So there's data, right? This this didn't come. This didn't. It's not just someone just woke up one day and said, "Hey, let's decriminalize. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what happens." It's, it was right. done somewhere else first, and we looked at their example and went, "You know, that seems to be working. Maybe we should try a pilot program and see how it works out here." All right. So, what that which was decriminalized, nothing was legalized. I guess an open drug use was certainly not legalized. Possession of 2.5 grams or less of hard drugs was not going to be criminalized. So what they're saying happened did not happen. Six people dying from overdoses every day is wacko. Kids playing next to used syringes is wacko. I think we can both agree that that's probably not desirable. But it's not like the prime minister was making this happen. Friend, these are wacko policies from a wacko prime minister. My God, they use wacko like Jagmeet mm -hmm. Singh uses force. Yeah, I'd be under the table already. <laughs> like this, and here's the thing, right? The liberal speaker just threw Pierre Polyev out of the House of Commons for calling Justin Trudeau's drug policy wacko. Was Pierre wrong with three questions? And then, friend. These are wacko policies from a wacko prime minister. They actually say the prime minister is wacko in the email where they deny or actually don't say that Pierre Polyev was actually thrown out of the house for saying the prime minister is wacko. Well, and, and he very deliberately, this I'm reading a quote here, he very deliberately refused to withdraw the comment after being given four opportunities to do so. Okay. Thus I'm undermining the authority of the chair. At that point, it was a deliberate provocation, and he walked out of the chamber to cheers from his side before they all followed him out. It was nothing but a stunt. Polyev then said about tweeting that he was being censored by the liberal speaker, another unparliamentary provocation, but curiously avoided the media outside the chamber rather than rushing to the cameras and crying for them. To say what he had he to knows say. his audience, and he pl uh, plays more to social media than television. That's where he went for sympathy. The rest of the day was pretty much normal. The chamber was fairly quiet. It's funny how things seem, when the conservatives are not in the House of Commons, question period is question period again. Huh. So the reform party that hijacked the conservative party, that act like petulant children in a sandbox, took their toys and went home, and then everything went back to normal. That's why I said, can we make this permanent? Yeah. And then the email ends. We must defeat this wacko, woke, extremist Trudeau government. Wacko, woke, and extremist. All at the same time. Gee. I must be real busy at rehearsal. And we need you on our side to win. Chip in now before our deadline tonight to stand behind to stand behind Pierre and help ensure he becomes Canada's prime minister. Oh darn it! And, uh, one of the one of the responses here. Donate he did, today. Let's he did withdraw, home. but he replaced with radical. The speaker was way off base. No, the speaker asked him to withdraw the question, the statement, withdraw the whole thing, not a word, the whole thing, because you're not allowed to in the House of Commons. That's it. Cannot act, do what, doing what Polyev did is not allowed in the House of Commons. No, it doesn't matter if he changed the word. What he did is not allowed by the rules of decorum of the House of Commons. It's not allowed. He was ejected, justifiably so. He broke the rules. Hmm. Two minutes for you. You I, go to the box and you feel shame. I, I, and I think. I mean, I'd have to go look at it again, but I had the impression that when the speaker address admonished him the first time, maybe if he had said, I withdraw and replace the word with, that would have passed that time. Mm. But by the time he offered to withdraw and replace, it was already like the second or third. 
right? So like while this is going on, I'm watching him like this, you know, he stops the, the sound for a bit, talks like this, says, I will give the leader of the opposition one more chance. I was like, how many freaking chances does this guy get? But I think that goes to what you said, Mr. Grizzly, because he is a liberal and from Quebec and a black man. Exactly. Exactly. The leader of the opposition by default gets four chances mm -hmm. so that the speaker can cover his own damn butt. I guess PP thought he he would get five. Maybe. Well, yeah. Or maybe he was just going to continue to petulantly defy. Which, by the way, no. Which, by the way, no. Which, by the way, no, 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 no. Which, by the way, not touching you, not touching you. Mm hmm, mm hmm. It's literally what happened. Yes. The only thing missing was I licked it, so it's mine. <laughs> Pretty much. I just. So, yeah. That's. These are the people who purport can lead a G7 nation and make life more affordable for you and deliver quality services while balancing the budget and while ensuring that our national defense is... These are the people that say you can trust us with all of that. This is how they behave. Oh, I have to, I have to show This you. is the job interview. This is the job interview. This is how they're behaving during oh, yeah. the job interview. I have to show you something right now that is related to his speech with the uh, Canadian Police Association. Okay. You you will find this fascinating. Um, somebody pointed this out, and I went, "Ooh, this is this is good." Because you know how he talks about jail, not bail. Mm -hmm. And he he went on with the Canadian Police Association. Now he's going to basically use the notwithstanding clause. Well. Somebody pointed this out. Did he say jail, not bail again? Let's start with the people who tried to overthrow our government and shut down our borders, like Tamara Leach. <laughs> Pierre Polyev wants jail, not bail for those charged with crimes. Start with the freedom convoy. Well, that oh, might yeah. come back to bite him in the ass if we start retweeting the hell out of that one. Yes, but of course, in PP's version of Canada, she never would have gotten arrested. She'd be Minister of Inter Intergovernmental Relations right now. He would have snatched her up around her in a by-election. Oh, yeah. Eyes wide open, kids. Yeah. He wants power way too badly. Don't give power to people who really, 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 really want it. Yeah, it's, it's, that's, yeah. And here's the thing, we, we've, we keep telling everyone on this program, all the viewers, the listeners, the people who, who watch on Twitter, who watch on, well, X, I guess, uh, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, and by the way, if you scan that code up in the top corner right here that I'm pointing to, that'll take you directly to our YouTube page. And uh, this um, link here across the bottom is our YouTube address where you can join in the chat and join the damn fam. But we keep saying we, we don't want to make the whole show about Pierre Polyev. We don't. There's other things we want to discuss. General culture, our, our show is politics and general culture. But when you have the leader of the loyal, the Lou, the, the loyal opposition leader, the Lou, or the, or the mm -hmm. leader of the loyal opposition, the LOL, Lou or LOL, you pick one. I mean, they're both garbage as far as I'm concerned. Uh, <clears throat> in this case, anyway, the official leader of the opposition, loyal. Yeah, that's questionable. When you have somebody that behaves in that manner on a daily basis, who uh, is so enamored with being in the spotlight all the time that he will kick up his heels and throw a fuss and throw dirt and yell and scream and, and do what... what uh, was it Wayne Easter? I have Wayne Easter's quote here. Let me just find it. Yeah, Wayne Easter's quote. This is from 10 years ago. Um, and it's a thing of beauty. 
and, and, and I'm just going to show it to you real quickly here because it, you might not remember this. For those of you who don't remember it, here it is. Watch this from 10 years ago. The Honorable Member for Mal Peck. Mr. Speaker, this minister's conduct yesterday was a disgrace to Parliament and to Canadians. Dealing with this minister is like playing chess with a pigeon. He flaps his wings all over the place, knocks the pieces off the table, messes all over the table, then struts around like he won the game. I mean, right? Yep. <laughs> Wayne Easter had it pegged. He did. The problem is, is that uh, in the last 10 years, when he messes all over the table, yeah, he leaves quite a stinky pile. <clears throat> we know he did live quite a stinky pile, but now uh, it's we may are odoriferous. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, um, I don't think there's time for any other news. No, and uh, I gotta let's 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 wrap up for today. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of the the lead story, right? I mean, what else were we going to cover today? I mean, come on, honestly. Like, and, and here's the thing: we did. I had all the clips ready, but uh, I, I was going to show a clip here and there. And you're like, let's just start from the beginning. I'm like, okay, we'll just show the whole thing because uh, as somebody commented that, thank you for showing the whole thing instead of just cutting and pasting clips. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Because when I was watching it, it was like watching it unfold. The clip gives you that moment. Mm -hmm. But when yes. you see from beginning to end how it started, that it was mm -hmm. one and then another, and then everybody that, that, you know, and then there was another, and then people walked out, and it's just like, and just the defiance over the period of time, the number of times he had to stop, the way that he's, the speaker stood up like this. And you can tell that he's fuming and not impressed. Like this, but doesn't raise his tone, doesn't raise his voice, doesn't, you know, speaks a little more crisply <laughs> now and then. But that's about it. Mm -hmm. He's a disgrace. He's unfair. He's un I'm sorry. It's. Uh, but yeah, I, I just want you to know the reason I provided the context. This is all changing the channel from the diagonal on stuff. Like this in Kitsas, he did make a comment there. I saw it. it's like that may not have been an actual diagonal protest, right. just there might have been diagonal sympathizers, yes. but not a diagonal. So, you know, distinctions for most Unless people. Unless something we don't. Yeah. For most people, that would be a distinction without a meaningful difference, but it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. It is. Um, and then the needing to change the channel, and then, you know, uh, and that, that this was a stunt for fundraising. And, you know, so this was all stuff that was done deliberately and they, it was done to be in order to get to an outcome. The open defiance, the four opportunities, had the speaker just, you know, thrown them out at the first time or the second time, you could have all oh, had that fig leaf of deniability. But given that mm -hmm. it was four chances, it was clear that this guy was determined to get himself ejected on that day oh, for and, this purpose. And he got the attention he wanted. Yes. From the Guardian. Black OPM, Canadian opposition leader, ejected for Trudeau insult. Conservative Pierre Polyev refuses to withdraw a wacko remark, prompting censure from Speaker and removal from Commons. Reuters in Ottawa, in The Guardian. The yep. paper of record. Yep. Speaker Greg Fergus, a liberal. Interesting that they have to point that out. This is a wacko policy from a wacko PM that's destroying lives. See, here's the thing people said. He called the policy wacko. He didn't call the PM wacko, but he did. He did. Right there. I am a digital soldier. Liberalism is a mental disorder in case you missed it. Uh-huh. You know, you're allowed to come yep. in here and have we your missed opinions. It. I'm, yeah, totally, uh, totally have your opinions. Just don't be insulting people. If you start insulting people, we will ban you. I'm telling you this right now. Yeah. Uh, Your opinion I, I, is allowed, yeah. and we, we, we respect healthy debate, and we encourage it. However, no, but you know what? I'm going to say I'm going to step in on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a digital soldier. I thought at first you were being sarcastic. Now you're being a bit of a dick. Uh, on this show, we start our show asking people how their mental health is doing today. Mm -hmm. 
the rules of if you've got better channels to watch, then please go do that. Then go. Then go. You don't have to nobody. Stick nobody asked you to be here, and nobody's asking you to leave. And but if you want to leave, leave, you're welcome to leave. But you're in our house, and the rules of our house is that we don't joke about mental health. Yeah, and, and here's this the thing: way, and we don't we use it as you. a cudgel. And we so. didn't ban you. We didn't ban you. You're welcome to come back if you can be civil. Same rules that applied in the house that we just saw that the show's about apply to you. Oh, he's a diagonal guy? He's here to troll? Okay, well, Saucy, if you want to ban him, go ahead. Feel free. You can use the wrench and do what you what need is, to do. If that's the case, yeah. Do what you need to do, Saucy. No good. No, no, no issues from our end. We trust your judgment. <clears throat> Thanks so much. Don't let the door split you. Don't let the wrench split you with a good... <laughs> don't let the... the good. Yeah. yeah, don't let the wrench... Yeah, yeah please. Don't let the wrench split you. Don't let the wrench hit you where the good Lord split you. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, yeah, you're real original. Mm. Like, you're only like the, what, this is only like the 100 billionth time in the history of social media that someone said that liberalism is a mental disorder. Number one thing, sir, on social media is don't commit the cardinal sin of being boring and unoriginal. Yeah. We've heard this before. Yawn, click, goodbye. All right. Toodles, poodle. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. Wouldn't want to be ya. Yeah. The only wackos we like here is Wacko, Jacko, and Dot. We're the enemy. All right. Kits and Cubs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So please tell your peeps and poops all about this. We really appreciate it when you do that. I do not know why I went fuzzy all of a sudden again. I today. Don't know. Uh, I, th I think it's because I brought out dad voice. Maybe. The camera got a little scared. Ooh. <laughs> uh, if you would like to not miss an episode, please, you do not have to, thanks to the Ray Girl, who, by sponsoring our pod page, made sure that you have a way to subscribe. So if you go to podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words, or scan that QR code that Mr. Grizzly just made appear right under my chin. That will break you there. And if you click subscribe there, well, my good friends and members of the damn fam, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. And if you would like to help us in other ways, well, then you need to make like Kit Lane and go to the True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page where we have three buttons, like, share, and subscribe. Ah, uh, thank you, Michelle. We love you too as well. <laughs> it's getting some love right here as, as, we, as we have the credits uh, as we're getting ready to, to, to roll out here um, so yes uh, like share and subscribe click all our buttons that makes us very very happy we love the attention so thanks and if you'd like to help us in any other way well hey you can go to uh, the True North Eager Beaver Emergency Hydration Fund by scanning that QR code that's by Mr. Grizzly's head or by using the lovely digits on your lovely hands or your voice prompt to go to coffeeko-fi.com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And uh, if you have a little bit uh, jangling in your pockets there, if you've liked uh, the work that we've done on the budget, on bringing you this type of stuff, on uh, debunking uh, PP's lies about rent and debt and housing, um, please, uh, whatever you can donate uh, really helps us. It keeps us <clears throat> moist. moist and allows us to deliver this product to you. So thank you very much. Uh, because democracy is something that you do, uh, do write those letters. Uh, again, particularly with regard to uh, wanting to protect constitutional rights. Particularly if you're in an, an electoral district represented by a CPC MP. Uh, let them know that uh, their party is definitely on the wrong track with this one. Mm -hmm. and that you are not having it. And if you're a conservative voter, you most of all should be concerned about this. Yes. Again, we're not trying to be hateful. We're just trying to say, and as we've said before, they use you, and once they're done with you, they throw you out. So those laws that are there that can be used to help keep down people you both don't like right now, uh, once they're in place, uh, they're going to be used against you at some point. You're just a condom for them in a back alley that gets tossed off when they're done with you. 
All right. So um, we're not trying to hate. No, no. We're trying to warn you. Trying to warn you. Because we care about you. I know you don't think we do. The writing is on the wall. We're not being alarmist. We're not being hyperbolic. The writing is on the wall. They've told us what they're going to do. Believe them. I do. I do. I see how much effort they're putting in to getting done what they want it is they get done. I believe them. I believe them. So? You don't work that hard at something you don't believe in. I be believe Be ever them. vigilant. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. It's not that these people don't work hard. It's just that they work hard at all the wrong things. All the wrong things. All righty. All right. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom, please? Yeah. Share this with everybody you know so that they can get the full message of what took place yesterday and not just a 30-second clip that Pierre Polyev wants you to see so he can fundraise off of it. Show them this program so you can see the entire incident as it played out. That's show them, words of wisdom. And show them yesterday's too because yes. uh, that red alert, uh, that's serious, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, yesterday's and today's. Show them the back-to-back. Share this with everyone you can because it's imperative that Canadians know what is happening, what is going on. And again, the reason we have this show is because so many people don't have the time to sit down and watch the 6 o'clock news. They don't have the time to listen to a program directly at work when you can listen to our show whenever you want. Yes, you can, can join us live stream in the morning, but it's YouTube and it's also on the air. On the, um, there's an audio version only. You can listen to us at your leasure. Yeah. And, and we'll th- always tell you the truth. Yeah. And Mr. Jim's here says, haven't had this level of nervous since Harper, same thing. But you have to remember there's a principle of communications that's called influencers. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a circle of influence, every single person. And if you're here and if you're watching this show, it's because you're democratically engaged and you probably want to be more informed. You are probably the leader in your individual circles of influence. Mm-hmm. So go okay. out there and spread the word. Spread the word. Here we go. Roll the credits. Cue the cock, Mr. Grizzly. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. Uh, just simple little bit of Easter, uh, Easter egg. The Leafs somehow are still on life support. Yeah. They they won last night in overtime in a 1-1. I wouldn't call it a nail biter, but it was a close game. Um, yeah, they, they, they managed to pull off the victory, so they're still alive for game six, which is tomorrow night in, in Taranta. So, you know, if you're a Leafs fan, good for you. Hey. Yeah. You take what you can get. I guess so. All, All right. right. Have a beautiful day. I'm going to roll on out. See ya.